I bought this pass load framing nailer years ago. I needed to build three small buildings on my property and I did not want to use a hammer. This video will show you a little bit about the inside of this pass load nailer should you ever need to take it apart, clean it out, or inspect it. Shown on the top of this nailer, the orange cap, it's a directional vent that can be adjusted to suit the application. This orange exhaust vent is adjustable, just to loosen the screw. This shows the piston and sleeve cylinder assembly with the cap removed. This photo shows the inside of the main housing. The plastic part in the center of this housing at the bottom is called the bumper. The red circle shows an air passage to the main control valve. The yellow circle shows the hole for the locating pin. The cap with a control valve on it will only go one way. Also shown here is the gasket which is still attached to the main housing. I'm calling this a vent o-ring. It covers some vent holes and must act like a check valve. The cylinder and sleeve is shown at the top and the piston and drive rod shown at the bottom. This is a top view of the top cap and the four Allen screws that retain it. The orange colored vent screws right to the center of this top cap. When you reinstall this cap, you should be able to easily press this cap down flush with the gasket. Don't use the Allen screws to pull this cap down. If you're having to do that, you've done something wrong. This is the underside of the top cap showing the control valve assembly, as pass load calls it. The yellow circle shows the air passage to the main control valve, and the red circle shows the locating pin. To remove the trigger for access to the air control valve underneath the trigger, you have to break this little plastic retainer that goes on the trigger retaining pin. This photo shows the trigger retaining pin. The plastic retainer that had to be broken away in order to remove this pin would be on the top of this pin as shown in the photo. When you reinstall this pin, you can use a hairpin clip shown here in this photo that is used on carburetors and automotive repair. You could also use a thick bodied o-ring that would slide over the end of this pin to retain it. Or you could make a retainer from a piece of vinyl or rubber tubing. Just slice off a piece and use it like you would an O-ring. The red arrow shows the trigger retaining pin hole. This pin can go in either way, makes no difference. There are two row pins that must be driven from this main body in order to remove the trigger air control valve. I have already removed that control valve as you see here and you see the hole where the trigger control valve goes between the two roll pins. Here's another photo showing the location of the trigger air control valve. Also the two roll pins that hold the air control valve in place. One of these roll pins is hidden by the rubber grip on the handle. These roll pins have to be removed almost all the way with the proper size punch. And this is the front of the trigger air control valve as you would see it with the trigger removed. This photo shows the O-ring groove for the O-ring and it also shows the roll pin locking groove. Make sure that you have this control valve pressed all the way into the housing before trying to drive the roll pins back in place. And this shows the trigger air control valve and its parts. And here is the retaining pin slid back through the trigger and through the housing, ready for a retainer clip. Here the hairpin clip is installed. This photo shows the adjustment for the depth of the nail. The yellow arrow shows the Allen screws that retain this nose piece to the main housing. 
I did not try to remove these Allen screws because evidently pass load uses a locking compound that would require the screws to be heated before they could be removed. So I didn't go into that. I wasn't having trouble with the nose piece. This lockout bar is shown here by the yellow arrow will prevent the gun from firing if the gun is empty. If this gun had nails in it, the locking bar would be out of the way as shown here in this photo. You should be able to find a parts breakdown for this gun on the web very easily. Thanks for watching my videos and I hope this little video on this pass load nailer will help you understand how it works and help you to diagnose a problem should you have one. See ya.